Tracy, hi, welcome back. And we have sunshine here in my home in Sussex, England. The spring decorating is going to continue. This week, we are gonna do not one, but two living rooms. We're also gonna do a tablescape because I'm gonna change the kitchen table. Lots of my previous thrift haul items, they're gonna be coming out for styling as well. I'm gonna be revealing where I store everything because I'm asked so often, where do you put everything? Well, this week, I'm gonna show you. Welcome to the snug. Now, if you've not been here before, this is a room just off the kitchen, no TV. We use it to sit, relax, chat, read a book, have a drink. It's a very sociable room, very much dressed for winter. So we need to get that one sorted. And we're also going to do what we call the winter sitting room. Sounds a bit pretentious, doesn't it? Basically, it is more of a family room, a TV room. It's in the old part of the house. It's quite a dark room. So we tend to use it on an evening or in the winter. Now, back to the snug. I've taken out lots of the winter styling, just left a few key pieces that I want to use. Now, one of those pieces is one of Bertie's proudest finds. He absolutely was cock-a-hoop to have found this antler. So how to decorate for spring in here? Well, last episode, when we did the kitchen, went to the garden center and found these polyanthus. And I put those into separate clay pots. I used quite a few, I think nine in total along the table in the kitchen. And then I added gypsophila baby's breath and just let that dry back naturally. I also found a pair of old curtains, linen curtains, beautiful pale green. So with those, I chopped a few of those up and turned those into placemats and napkins. So that kind of set the colour theme. Now, during this week, I have popped into my favourite charity shop, had a rummage through their fabrics and lo and behold, I spotted this for a pound I thought it was worth a punt. Now, I brought it home and tried it against the cushion that I normally have on this chair, and it started to spark a few ideas as to what I could do in this room, but more of that later. Now, first job to do is start stripping that kitchen table. The luncheon that we had, wonderful, absolutely wonderful time, but I don't need the table set for a luncheon. So I'm gonna do a new kitchen tablescape. I've taken off a couple of the polyanthus. I had a hessian ribbon wrapped around the pots and I'm switching that out for a green one that I found on Amazon. As always, I'll link as many products as I possibly can in the description box below. I'll also link videos as well that I mention. It's always worth having a check out of that description box because there's lots of information in there. I bought these polyanthus a few weeks ago. I got 16, they were marked up at 2.99 each, but because I was going to buy pretty much what they had in stock, they gave me a discount and I got the 16 for 40 pounds. Now, of course, these are perennials, so they're going to last for years. When I've finished with the spring decor, they will go outside. They'll either go onto the verandas or eventually they'll go into the ground or into pots and they will come back year after year. So they really do represent good value for money. And if you keep on deadheading them regularly, taking off any yellowing leaves and making sure they don't dry out, the flowering time extends for weeks and weeks and weeks. The gypsophila that I used on the kitchen table has dried back really well and I'm a waste not want not kind of gal. So I'm gonna use that on the mantle as well.
let's move round into this corner where I've got a small bench style console table that I picked up for less than £30 at auction and also a huge twig wreath. Now I got five of these between Christmas and New Year. It was a bit of an extravagance from TK Maxx but they were reduced to just £20 each. Such a bargain. I want to do a big display in this corner here. So I've got a clay pot that I've wiped wall filler around just to lighten it. And it's really quite porous. So it's gonna be a vessel within a vessel. I'm also gonna add the water first because I'm gonna go big here and it could be a bit difficult to get in later. So what to put in it? Well, there's still not a huge amount going on in the garden at the moment, but we do have pussy willow and elder is starting to come into leaf. So I think a few stems of that. Magnolia, oh, this beautiful old magnolia tree. It has huge white flowers over it and that will happen really quite soon. Next to it is a cherry blossom, but I think we're a good few weeks away from that. I always try to decorate as much as I possibly can using nature as opposed to using faux. I'm not anti-faux, I have faux, I will happily mix it in, but I think if you can bring nature into your house, it just, it just feels nicer. It's also kinder on your bank balance too. Now, quite often when I'm putting these into water, they will start to root and then I'll cut them down, put them into compost and just wait and let nature take its course. Over the years, I've actually had several free trees from doing this. You will always see lots of vintage books in my decorating, absolutely love them. And this season I have been rounding up all my green ones and using them in different ways. And green is very much a color I'm using this spring. Now, what to put in this place? On my latest haul video, which you would have seen a couple of weeks ago, I came across this beautiful dish and I was determined to use it in my spring decorating and now is the time. I'm having a hankering for some moss in it. Now we've got so much moss here and particularly this year because it has been so wet. I mean, unbelievably wet. It just never stops raining. I'm desperate to get the lawns cut, but they're just too wet to put the mower on them. Now, while we're out hunting down moss, I'm going to show you some of my storage areas. So come this way and I will show you my big storage unit. Now you've got to excuse the state of these sheds. I haven't touched them since 2018. Definitely going to be a project for this summer. They need a major paint job. The large one in the middle I had built just after we moved here back in 2016 because we planned on doing a major renovation, which we did, and I didn't want all my furniture going off site and I wanted to keep it all here. So it's been so useful. It was brilliant through the build and now I use it for all things that are waiting for a makeover or things that won't get damaged by being in a shed outside. There are lots of auction finds in here and also when I buy mixed job lots at auction there's always a lot of bric-a-brac in there and I tend to just keep that all in a pile ready for me to bundle up and donate to the charity shops. Smaller items that I use in seasonal styling, I've started to use these plastic containers just bought off Amazon and I tell you the long flat ones have been a game changer because I can see everything in there. I can put them in by season and so they're so easy to find. Right at the bottom I've got the Christmas baubles and because I don't want too much weight compression I've just used some blocks of wood just to elevate the weight above it so they don't get crushed beneath. Now in this old shed, it used to be my tractor shed, my rider 
on mower. Um, you can tell we've got a professional golfer in the family, can't you? We've just got tons of golf balls. I'm going to have to try and come up with something that I can do with golf balls in home decor. Now, in this shed at the end, this is sort of the garden shed. We found all these strange ornaments under plants and things when we first moved in. I also keep all of my old containers and an old filing cabinet, which is great for just storing all the plastic pots. They quite happily live there, as do some active spiders, judging by the amount of cobwebs as long as they stay down here happy days and not in the house i built another log store down here just out of scaffold boards and it's to store the longer planks some of these are really old timbers that came out of the house now i do have them on the angle i know they should be laid flat but i'm wanting some of these lengths to bow i've got so many ideas for different projects but i just never have enough time i'm so time poor there's further storage in the garage and then above the garage there's an attic room and I tend to keep all the old Christmas things up there. In the cottage, I built in some floor to ceiling storage units using old doors, again, that have just been taken off from around the house. And that's great storage for all the veranda fabrics, tall candlesticks, basically anything I want to put in there. The big cabinet that I've got in the hallway, I absolutely adore this. That's home to quite a few bits and bobs. So things just keep on getting rotated and moved around. Now back to collecting moss. Do you remember that? We were out here collecting moss. Hubby decided a few months ago that he'd do me a favour by completely clearing this path. Oh, I was gutted. I think I actually cried because moss grows on here so beautifully. You get this lovely thick carpet and then when you're decorating it's so easy to come out and just with a little spatula go underneath it and you can lift great clods of it so you can imagine yeah naughty step for him big time The gypsy filler that just keeps on giving, but we need something more in there. Now, a couple of years ago, I picked up these Easter eggs. They were in the cardboard egg trays and I thought they were loose. So when I got them out of the packet, I was quite surprised to find that they were all stuck in. Last year, it didn't really matter because the table was pink. Well, this year we're very much green and white. So. I don't think they really go. And I'm very much a waste not want not kind of gal. So we're going to do a little bit of a makeover on them. That glue, the bits of cardboard is very unsightly. So I've popped them into some warm water and literally just after a couple of minutes, all that glue became loose and it was so easy just to remove it all. So once I'd got that off, yes, it did lift off some of the paint, but it didn't matter because we're going to paint again. I picked up these test pots in a charity shop just for a couple of pounds. So I've got the eggs, I've got some cocktail sticks, cardboard, a plastic tray, a sponge, scissors, and the cardboard is going to be my drying station. So I use the cocktail stick just to make a few holes in to start with, and it just makes putting them in a lot easier. And then the sponges, I decided not to go with the red, so I'm using the sponges just to dab on three different green tones. There's an almond there as well, just to bring it more into the colour theme, but they need more. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of brown. I've got on fleur chalk paint with some water. The brush just wasn't stiff enough. So nail brush always works a treat if you want to do a splattering effect. So I'm just dabbing on a little bit of paint and then just, I always find with these things, just find your way first, go gently. And then as your confidence builds, well, I'm getting a little bit trigger happy here, aren't I? I am firing these speckles off at a rapid rate.
Let's keep moving around the room and onto this side table. Now, this was found in my favourite charity shop. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. It was just five pounds. Now, the top was really badly marked, which is probably why they priced it so low. But I tell you, the power of a sander and some white wax and within a few hours, it looked like this. So it's always worth taking a punt on a piece of wooden furniture like that. If it is heavily marked, just get the sander out and see where you go with it. If the marks don't come out, then you can always do a wash or do a full paint effect on it. So with my faux stone vase, I'm adding a bust that I painted and white waxed and an antique Welsh butter press. Now, time for some fabrics on my big eight foot sofa. I absolutely love this one because I can lay full length, completely stretched out. For those of you wondering where Bertie is, he's in hair and makeup at the moment. He's just had a big swim and he adores the hair dryer. Any opportunity for a blow dry, this diva is there. I'm gonna switch out all of the fabrics in here for spring. I'm not buying any, but I'm just moving things around the house. So this throw, I absolutely adore. You'll have seen me last time use this in my bedroom. It was part of a brand promotion. And I loved the blankets so much that I actually went and bought another two myself, my own hard earned money. But it's wonderful. And I would never promote a product that I don't truly love. So this is available on Amazon. It's in different sizes, different colors. So if you're in the market for a new blanket and you throw this season, then please do go check out those links. I'm loving the lighter colors on here, but I think it needs a little something else. So you remember earlier when I showed you this cover that I'd picked up for a pound from the charity shop, it got me thinking about the shape of it. Now I don't use a sewing machine, but I love to switch out my fabrics. It can be really expensive just buying new cushion slips all the time, never mind just buying whole cushions. Now this piece of fabric looked as though it was just folded in half, stitched down the sides and then open at the bottom. I couldn't believe it actually fitted like a glove for one pound there we go I've got a fabulous cushion so it made me think well can I make these without actually putting them through a sewing machine yes I can hand stitch and here I'm going to put a running stitch just to close up the bottom because then it's very easy just to snip the thread take the pad out and put another cover on but I thought maybe fabric tape would work. So I headed down to my local haberdashery called so-and-so. Oh, it's like going back in time, this place. I remember shops like this as a child. Floor to ceiling crammed full of every colour possible of wool and fabric and lace and ribbons. Oh, so many ribbons. Anyway, I picked up my fabric tape and on the way back to the car, saw a charity shop with a one pound for everything and whoa, hello, green fabric. Well, I couldn't leave those behind, could I, for a pound? So I got all this fabric. It is a slightly different shade to the curtains that I bought previously, but I thought these might be fabulous to practice making no-sew cushions on. My cunning plan was to create an envelope shape, so no need for zippers or anything like that, and have a flap that folded over. Now, with these being curtains and already having stitching on them, as opposed to just buying a roll of fabric, I've already got some hems, some seams made. So just down each side, potentially, is all I would need to do. I started off on one side of the curtain so I could utilize one of the seams and the header, which meant I only had to then cut along the bottom and up the side. So for the length, I doubled the length of the pad and then added on another seven inches to allow for doing a seam at the bottom and for the flap. And then coming across, I took the width of the cushion and then added on another inch in order to be able to turn that over to create a seam down that side. 
This is the fabric tape that I picked up. Now, if you're used to doing this and you can recommend other brands or stronger brands, easier to use ones, please do let me know. Share with the community in the comments. Once I'd actually got my fabric cut out, I decided on the sides where I didn't already have a stitched edge, I would iron one in. This isn't strictly necessary, but because I was going to have my seams on the outside of the cushion, I wanted to make sure that they looked as though they had been sewn. I also took off the header tape, which was quite easy to remove. I don't even know if that's the right terminology, actually. Now, now, because I am not quite five foot two, I am always using Wonderweb in order to shorten trousers, jeans, that type of thing. And so I wasn't certain that I had enough tape. So that's why I ironed that in. It's not necessary. You could just straight away run the tape all the way around if you didn't have any edges or any seams and then just fold straight over. And that will give you your length of fabric that's got four neat edges to it. After a little bit of playing around with the pad, moving it up and down, working out exactly how much of the flap was going to come over, I was then ready to put the sides together using the double-sided fabric tape. Now, if you can sew, of course, you're going to get your sewing machine out and you'll be knocking these things out the park week in, week out. But for those people like me that can't, this, I think, is going to be a fabulous way for me to go forward. I can pick up fabric for next to nothing around the charity shops. I'm saving myself lots of money. I'm giving money to charity. And then just by using this tape, using this simple technique, I can keep on adding these decorative pillows to my seasonal styling without spending lots of money. Once the fabric tape is in position, you just peel off the backing paper and then bring your other piece over, pressing down firmly to form a strong bond. It creates an instant bond. So I wouldn't do this on fabric that I would want to take apart again. This is a very much just use it once and it will stay in position. As I'm making this, I'm thinking this fabric is going to work really well out on the house veranda, on the cottage veranda, for spring, summer, even into autumn styling. As the tape bonds instantly, you can replace your cushion pad straight away. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I've never made one of these before. So tucking the flap in, I uh, think there we go. I've got an instant decorative pillow. I'm now going to move on to the other fabric, the lighter green fabric that I used in the kitchen. And I'm going to make some cushions for the sofa. Next up is the coffee table. Now this six foot coffee table was redone at the beginning of the year. So I'll link the video down below in case you're interested in recreating this textured finish. But how to dress it? I've got this great big bowl here. Again, it was picked up at auction. It was in one of the job lots of lots of glass and crockery. Dismissed it to start with, but actually I really quite like it. I'm wondering if it's potentially a reject because it hasn't got a maker's mark on it and some of the gold is in the glaze. Now I like to pop things up in my wheelbarrow. It's just such a convenient way. It doesn't kill your back doing 
using it, you don't have any wasted compost, you know, nothing goes on the floor. I'm going to bring out some of the polyanthus as well because we've only used two off the kitchen table and there were nine in total. We are going to use them all. So in this one, I am going to use probably five, I think, for the size of bowl. The gravel acts as the drainage. I know when I did something similar on my kitchen video, a lot of people asked, but surely they're going to get waterlogged? No, because the gravel acts as the drainage and you're just very careful with the amount of water that you put into them. I love doing this kind of planting. And I think it's a great way to bring out all those pieces that you love that end up sitting at the back of your cupboard, you know, waiting for that special occasion. Well, I think as you get older in life, every day is a special occasion. So I don't keep anything for best anymore. If I love it, it gets used, it gets seen. Just to make it look prettier, I'm going to add the moss all over the compost. And as I don't like waste, the pussy willow that I used in the individual pots on the table are going into this as well. Quick wipe round and into its new position. the other end of the coffee table. Now I've got this huge wooden tray. It just works on the table. So I do use it quite a lot on here. I'm adding, it's actually quite a modern ironstone looking jug, but it's not, it's quite modern. Now this plate is interesting. If you saw the shop and haul video recently, you'll have seen me pick this up. It actually had three maker's marks on it, which enabled me to identify its age and it was made in 1890. So it most definitely is an antique piece. Remember anything over a hundred years old is antique. Anything under that is vintage or collectible. That kitchen table is still offering up more gypsa filler. That is such a bargain. I definitely recommend using that in your spring decorating and through into summer. I'm using a candle that I picked up from HomeSense and some little antlers. They're all Bertie's finds. You know, it's like having a child and putting the artwork on the fridge door. They love it when you display their work. Now, another thing that I do for Bertie as well, I decorate way too much with that dog in mind, are putting a couple of sheepskins under the table as he loves to cozy up under there. Let's head over to the sideboard now. I bought this originally from auction, 30 pounds. It's solid oak and I was in a black phase at the time and I painted it so well that it will be a nightmare trying to get that black paint off. It's in desperate need. So I need to cover up those chippy marks until I can find time to paint it again. I'm adding the stone dish that my daughter made and I broke. So I glued it together and then did a faux stone effect on it. The same with the jug. I didn't break the jug, but it was bright orange. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of water because I'm bringing in a huge magnolia branch. Now, within a few days time of being in the warmth, of being in the water, this will start to open out and lovely big blooms. Either side, I'm going to add my two £7.50 each lamps that I did a faux stone effect on and the coir wrapping added another bulb. This is what they looked like in the charity shop, but just such a great shape. They were perfect for that technique. If you've not tried it yet, the stone technique, if you've not heard of it before, then I will drop a video in the description box. But I warn you, it is highly addictive. The big brown candlestick is one of a pair, originally pink, and I darkened them with dark wax. And this big tall one was found at the Mulvern Fair. I gave it a quick sand and then lightened it with white wax. 
Now we've used seven out of nine of the polyanthus from the kitchen table. So we're going to bring in the last two and they're going into the window on top of the candlestick. And I've put a longer green ribbon on both of the pots. And when they need watering, I'll just pop them in the kitchen sink. Now everywhere's comfy, cosy and decorated, the boys decided to put in an appearance. So I think we will leave him in there having a little snooze in front of the fire and we will go down into the kitchen and do a little bit of jig around and redecorate that table. So I'm going to give it a really good clean down. We've got everything off. Time to redress. I repainted the table at the beginning of the year. I'll link the video below. So I want to make sure that I don't scratch it with anything heavy. I'm using the same size all placemats that I used in the snug on the sideboard underneath the lamps. And that way it's not just practical, it also ties in the theme. I do love a cohesive look. These candelabras were originally glass and silver. I was in that sort of phase once upon a time. So to revitalize them, I covered them with chalk paint. This stone pot that I made was originally glass. Again, five pound charity shop find. Very pumpkin-esque. It has been in the snug in the winter styling. So when people ask about my storage, actually a lot of the time I'm just moving things around the house. They don't actually go into storage. So if you look back at the beginning of this video, you'll have seen these candlesticks in the snug on the windowsills. This is another find from my last thrift haul video. Gorgeous little box, which is going to be ideal for popping in the remote control for the kitchen TV. Now you didn't think I was going to leave the kitchen table like that, did you? I am just a little bit giddy. These Angelica that I found in HomeSense last summer, there's a big video on that. Again, I'll link it below. I was ecstatic, particularly when I saw that they were originally £42, reduced down to just £2.99. And I'm going to add the walking sticks or the canes as my American friends call them. I found these again on this last haul video. That video I said lots of the items were going to be coming out into the spring decorating. And this is the most exciting display that I have done in ages. I have wanted to do this since I saw those canes. And today is the day. If you saw the video that I made when I got these, I was talking about them all covered in glitter. Well, we now no longer refer to it as glitter. We're calling it decorative frost. So at, in March, you do get lots of frosty mornings. So I think these are just giant seed heads waiting to come to life in my mind, covered in frost. That's my story and I'm owning it.
let's head down to the other end of the house to the winter sitting room. Now I want to take out the big sheepskin rug that normally sits underneath the coffee table but Bertie is none too pleased. He really does not want to see that go. I just need to give it a really good clean. Now I've taken out all the winter styling that I did in there and just left in a few key pieces that I want to include in the spring. These two sheepskins have been living on the back of the big sofa in the snug but of course we've changed all that up so I'm going to bring these into here to go underneath the table to keep Bertie happy and when I've cleaned the great big rug then I'll make a decision as to whether or not it can come back into this room. I'm going to follow the same theme with these two sofas as well. As I said to you, I did genuinely go out and buy more of these throws because I just think they're absolutely amazing. And I bought them all in the buttercream and I bought them all the same size. So these are the large and they are, I believe, 60 inches by 80 inches, enough to spread right the way across on a super king size bed. over to the wicker basket that I'm currently using as a side table. Now my regular viewers will have seen this before. It was found in a charity shop for just five pounds. The wicker was loose and coming away in places so I just wrapped coir around and glued that into place and now it works perfectly well as a side table. I think we need a pop of colour here. So out into the garden and we've got laurel that's starting to come into flower. We've got so much laurel. So there's plenty to take pickings from. And I often come down here in my pyjamas with Bertie on a morning and just get a bucket full of snippings ready to do some decorating with. and a magnifying glass that I've had for many, many years just finishes this area off. Now over to the windowsill. These are actually glass pasta jars. When my daughter was at university, she had a group of three of them. And you know what it's like when the kids leave university, mum or dad ends up having to clear everything out and have a garage full of stuff. So I decided just to wrap them in coir and they make three statement piece vases. In this little window, I'm just going to add three candlesticks with remote control candles. Now, if you're coming into the mudroom, you have to walk past this window. So I always think on an evening, it's lovely just to have a little bit of candle light there to welcome you home. Now this side of the house goes back to the early 1700s and this ingle nook here was the only thing that didn't change position in the build. There's some lovely old hooks here that have been on the walls for goodness knows how long. So I've just painted over them and I'm going to add another one of these huge twig wreaths for no other reason than I just love them and I like to look at them. Another find from my latest thrift haul is coming out now and it's this old woodworking tool. It was found in a charity shop for just £15, covered in little paint splatters, but I've just very gently removed those and then finished off with some dark wax. A couple more remote control faux candles, which I absolutely love these. I am just a complete convert to them now. Just love my little clicker.
coffee table styling now. Now I've got this old tray, again it was a charity shop find and I did a crackle glaze effect on it using glue. This box came from the last thrift haul. It's a thrift haul that just keeps on giving and all these items are coming out in the spring styling. Another one of Bertie's finds and some coasters because the table is covered in white wax. Another reduced home sense candle here, just five pounds, and it matches the one that's in the snug. The copper dish here is actually a milk churn lid, and it was found in a charity shop. And the last of the gypsy filler from the kitchen table is coming out now. My goodness, this is a hardworking little flower. To keep the laurel leaves alive, to stop them from wilting, because the dish is watertight, I can add some water underneath that moth. So as we come to the end of episode two of my spring decorating series, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's given you lots of ideas and inspiration. There's going to be lots more in this series, so please do subscribe if you're not already. Remember to hit that thumbs up as well because it just sends such positive signals to YouTube and it will help me to keep on making videos like this. I thank you so much for your time, for your company, and I would love to welcome you back to my home very soon. Take care.